This is a 1950s peerless motor from my 825 Logan lathe and as you can see it's covered in I don't know, 60, 70 years of oil. Uh, part of the problem is that the, this is a bushing motor versus bearings and it actually has uh, a felt piece inside that, that retains the oil for the bushing and obviously if you over oil it it's going to leak in there anyway. Uh, as well as the capacitor fried on it and leaked oil all over the place. So I'm about to clean it off and um, put it back together and see what happens. But here's the, the centrif centrifugal uh, switch for once it starts, it takes out the starter winding. Um, this piece is actually in really good shape, doesn't look too bad. There's a centrifugal uh, mechanism itself. But uh, I'll let you know how this turns out once I get done cleaning it up. Okay, I got the motor back together. Um, there's actually this really cool little plate that I didn't realize you can remove the pins and pull the whole motor out on the plate instead of trying to pull the bolts off and get underneath there and hold stuff. So I uh, pulled the plate out, put the motor back on. It seemed to work pretty well. It's kind of nice. You can adjust it the motor positioning left or right and then this has a little bit of play in it so that it'll keep the the belt from putting too much uh, side thrust on the shaft but you can also move the motor to to change the pulley and belt position so it's a pretty slick setup I wish I would have not uh, tried to pull all those bolts out it's kind of a pain I haven't got my capacitor yet so I'm not ready to wire it back up but I think I'm gonna move the capacitor remotely that way um, if it pops again it doesn't drain oil down inside the motor and then uh, this was actually wired for two, 240 and I was running it on 120 so um, wasn't wasn't quite optimal but I'll put it back together the way it's supposed to be here's the switch that has uh, six wires coming to it from the motor area and it's pretty straightforward on how you wire this based on their wiring diagram which I'll show next and here's the wiring diagram that uh, comes with this lathe showing various ways to wire it, whether it's uh, third horsepower 110, half horsepower 115 single phase, or 230 single phase, which is what I wired it as. I did it backwards. Oh, great. And then there's also uh, three phase. So um, as you can see from the junction box that's on the motor, it's a very, very tight fit, especially when you have all these wire nuts that somebody had originally wired it with. So uh, right now I just move the capacitor down and off the motor, so if it ever pops again, it's not going to leak oil all over that, and I won't have to deal with that. I'll probably uh, need to attach the wires to the top of the motor just to be safe, so not, there's not a lot of movement there, but for now this will work. All right, back in business after I wired it for 110, which was the whole point of this project. Ton more horsepower, which I guess technically is twice as much, but it runs much better on uh, 110 wiring than it does on 220. 